Alrighty, what's going on everybody and welcome to another NBA dro- draft profile with Dr. Fantasy and as always the Fantasy Caveman. Today we're going to be talking about Jaden Hardy, 6'4", 198 pounds, played for the G League Ignite last season. Season averages of 19.5 points, 4.3 rebounds, 3.6 assists, shot a little under 31% from three, a little under 38% as a whole from the field, which is fantastic, and then 79% from the free throw line. So, Caveman, what strengths do you have for Jaden Hardy? All right, and we, I'll say we just got done talking about with a couple of international prospects how the percentages don't tell the whole story. And I think that this is a weird or this is one where we're talking about the guy that actually played for a college, uh, actually like didn't play overseas, uh, but uh, the percentages don't tell the whole story is what I'm getting at here. Uh, I like I like his motion. I like his form. Uh, I like his ability. His, I believe in his overall shooting ability. Uh, shot. Uh, he can he can shoot the ball in multiple ways in multiple situations whether you know it's off pick and rolls catch and shoots uh, shot over fifty percent on unguarded threes uh, which we'll talk about uh, we'll talk we'll talk about uh, the threes that were guarded and his weaknesses but uh, <laughs> but yeah uh, and then the other thing uh, imagine almost. The average uh, is this solid secondary playmaker. Uh, and this is interesting for me because, like I said, he played for the G League. I don't, you, from, in recent memory, I don't really, you don't really reference uh, the G. And I don't know if this is just like a, like a stigma or like a, like a stereotype or something, but you don't talk about non G League point guards. Uh, they're like uh, like shooting guards from the G League that are good uh playmakers. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless they're a point guard, or unless they're the team's primary playmaker. But uh, Jaden Hardy has, I think, he has a he does very solid secondary playmaker. Uh, he's mm-hmm. going to uh when put in a situation, he's going to uh he he's gonna he's gonna uh, make the right play a, a decent amount of the time. Uh, again, there's something to say about that with the weaknesses, but I think his ability as a sec- solid secondary uh, playmaker cannot be overlooked. Yeah, it's really interesting to me. I mean, coming out of high school, he was one of the most highly rated guards in the class. And after one year, we're talking about a guy that most people have going in the 20s, which is really odd to me and you mentioned you can't go 100 percent by the stats which is definitely true he's playing against a you know professionals at 18 years old which people forget about sometimes but uh, i mean he's scored 19 and a half points a game still and when you look at a lot of his metrics and the percentages i mean People didn't have – they're similar to Jalen Green in the G League, and we had no qualms with Jalen Green coming in last year. So I don't know. It's interesting to me that people are so low on him because this is a guy that was probably a top-five pick a year ago or had potential to be a top-five pick. So to see somebody fall that much is really interesting to me. And when you look at his strengths, you mentioned a lot of it. This is, you know, the classic or what we call now the three level score. He really can score at all three levels. Um, he's not the greatest finisher, I, you know, which is definitely a weakness for him right now. But I saw enough flashes to where I guess I'll say he has three uh, level scoring abil- or potential. I don't think he has it now, but I do think he can develop into that. Um, mm-hmm. Right now, a lot of it tends to be on the three point line. He actually was considered the best three-point shooter in the high school class coming out. So, And he has a very nice stroke. I mean, it's good mechanics. I think he has a lot of potential there. So I don't think that's a weakness. That's a big strength of his. 
he can definitely create his own shot. He's great in the pick and roll game. You mentioned his playmaking upside, which I think is definitely a big plus for him. He's not going to be a team's primary number one, but he's going to be a number two guy playing off the ball and he can make all the passes necessary in that role. So, but I think this is just the guy that's going to score a lot in the NBA. I mean, I, I think that's the reality for him. Um, I mean, similar to like when we talked about Cam Thomas coming out last year, just the guy that's going to come into the league and be able to score. And that's what I think Jaden Hardy is with even more upside than that. Um, some of the weaknesses definitely were glaring and they're things that he's going to have to work on. And we've seen other players improve upon this, but he is a very poor decision maker right now. And that goes for turnovers. It goes for his shot selection, which is a little questionable at times. But we do see that quite a bit from younger players. Uh, I mentioned him having three-level scoring potential. As of right now, he is not the greatest finisher. He tends to pull up early and take uh, contested jumpers rather than trying to finish and get to the free throw line, which is definitely an issue. Um, and then two things that are kind of tied together, but it might be what's driving him going down because based on his potential, I don't think this is a guy that should go in the twenties in my opinion. And that's saying a lot for a guy that has absolutely no defensive ability for me to be saying that. So, uh, but there's been a lot of rumblings that he's not very mature. And uh, I mean, that's the reality that that could be what's driving it. And that is definitely a huge factor. Some people question his uh, commitment, but we were also saying that a few years ago about one of the comparisons that I have for him. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's a big piece of maturity. And the other thing I was going to say, he does not care about even being present defensively. I mean, he legit <laughs> legitimately might be more effective as a defender if he just laid down and took a nap while he was on the court and he actually might be more effective in stopping somebody. So, but that sometimes can tie into maturity and, you know, I don't like questioning somebody's effort because I don't really know him and I don't watch every second that he plays, but there's been the rumblings of him not being committed and not wanting to put in the extra effort to become a better overall player. So that's what I got for weaknesses. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's definitely a big part of it. Uh, building off your finishing at the basket, he shot under 40% <laughs> around the basket. Uh, that's not very good, uh, at <laughs> all. Uh, like you said, with that, with his no defense, it kind of goes with his, uh, score first mentality. He, that's definitely something that's in. And it's weird because I don't think his score first mentality is like a selfish thing. You know, I don't think he's a like a, a selfish player at all, you know. Uh, I just think like that's his mentality and that's what he thinks is the best thing for his team. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely, that's, that's probably not going to fly very well at the NBA level. Uh, he's not going to. He since since he doesn't have the other parts of his game there to where like he's not going to be like a top pick that the team's going to like build around and you know where he can afford to be more score more score first oriented. You know, uh, so so we'll, I'm I'm very interested to see how that. Uh, plays out, and then uh, just uh, with that, just overall decision making and shot selection, uh, that's part of the reason why I don't think this uh, the uh, percentages tell the whole story. Uh, his percentages are being dragged down a decent amount by his just poor shot selection. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that. He improves his shot selection. That's alone going to raise his uh, percentages up. So, and I think that that's the frustrating. He's he's just the finishing is not really bringing him down to me a ton. I think I 
it really comes down to that score first mentality and just effort defensively. Those two things are so like horrendously bad for him that that is what is dragging him down. Uh, if he if if he was just not even like good defensively, but if we're talking about a guy that just like shows that he cares at all. Uh, we're talking about a guy that's easily a lottery pick and has a chance to really probably go inside the top 10, if we're being honest. Uh, so what's the biggest difference between him and Jalen Green, then? I, that's a guy that just went, what, second overall last year? That is that is a very good question because I see them as fairly similar players and I mean I'm looking not gonna at lie, I definitely had Jim Green down as a comparison. Yeah, that's what I mean. And I think it's a good comparison. And when you look at their G League stats, I mean eerily similar in a lot of ways. Even the percentages, he didn't get to the free throw line a lot either. So I just am really that's why I feel like there's gotta be more to it. I I think just Jalen Green was, and this is, I don't think you're going to, obviously this isn't, I don't know if this is not nearly enough to uh, make up the difference, but I think Jalen Green was more exciting to watch. That, does that count for something? If you think about not it. to me. That's not I mean, enough. <laughs> that's, I mean, no, it's not enough for you. But you can't, you, you can't disagree with the fact that Jalen Green was much more his game was much more exciting than. Uh, yeah, that's always the interesting thing to me is like we as people watching the game and not actual scouts. Like that might matter to us, but and, you know, that's where I start to question some of the NBA mock drafts that I see is who's actually putting these mock drafts together. Like is Hardy actually falling this far or do we just are we missing something and scouts are all like, Oh yeah, he's going to be a top 10 pick. And this we're is just all like, like, this is probably all perpetrated by like one team and like the lottery. So like, you know, they can kind of like sneaky. He seems like yeah. the type of guy that like a team, like if he's, if he were to slip too much, a team's going to trade up to get this guy. Yeah, probably like the stupid Warriors for some reason, because they need more. <laughs> yes, they need more. They already <laughs> they already have a problem with, uh, I wouldn't say a problem, but they already have, you know, kind of some rumbling surrounding, you know, Clay Thompson and Jordan Poole. And then, you know, so I don't think, no, guards, enough guards, no more guards. No I never thought I'd hear Golden. you say that. No more guards for Golden State. No more. What uh, do you have for ideal fits for him? Uh, I mean, that's. I mean, to me, uh, a couple, a couple of ones, uh, came to mind. I think if Cleveland moves on from Colin Sexton and trades him away to. Seems like the Lakers are linked to Colin Sexton these days. But if they ship Colin Sexton off, I think Jaden Hardy is a much better fit alongside Garland. Uh, which, ideally enough, well, we could talk about player comparisons, but sneak preview, Garland was one of them. Uh, but uh, then I, have, I have the Cavs now. I also have... Uh, and this is going to... This is going to seem so opposite, and you're going to, like, absolutely hate me for this one, but I really Probably. think I, – I really think uh, it's Atlanta because uh, they need more non-defenders on their team. They do. Uh, yeah. But I just – I think uh, at least I, – I really think offensively – He'd be put in a great spot uh, playing along Trey Young uh, in that backcourt. So uh, I wanted to put down the Spurs. Well, for the love of God. Just just because 
I knew it would upset you, but I decided not to, so uh, you're welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> I don't have anything to say. Um, so I had the Hawks down as well because I could see that being a scenario, and we've talked about them looking for a secondary ball handler, so there you go. There he is. Um, on a higher level, he's not going to go this high, but we've talked about the uh, Trailblazers needing somebody like that too. I mean, they pick seventh. So not that I think they're going to pick him seventh and there's probably better. I don't know. I mean, there are better options to other people. I don't see any reason he shouldn't be considered there, but I guess I know nothing at this point. Um, I also had the Grizzlies down. You know, they're one of those teams where defensively they have enough to make up for his lack of caring to a certain extent. So uh, and I think lastly, we've mentioned the Mavericks as well, just having a second ball handler and just more, especially early on. I think he'd give them a little uh, a nice punch off of the bench, too. So, uh, OK, NBA comparisons. What do you got for that? I don't for some reason I have a lot of names down, so I don't. <laughs> uh, I mean, I already told you one of them, uh, Darius Garland. Uh, I kind of like that uh, comparison. Another name, another name I had down is a guy where I really want this guy to really start getting more playing time. Uh, that's uh, Emmanuel Quickly uh, from the Knicks. I had I had him down as well. Uh, and then the other name I think this is the like the high end uh, comparison. And uh, that's uh, Donovan Mitchell. I think that I think that's uh, kind of the upper end comparison for him. I can deal with that. Yeah, I mean a big thing. So my upper end comparison, I'll start with that. I guess is Anthony Edwards, who we've compared to um, Donovan Mitchell before. So I guess. So it's all the same concept. I mean, same concept, really. So So, yeah. Aaron Jane Hardy to Donovan Mitchell, basically. Yeah, same thing, I guess, at this point. Uh, Lower end comparisons. You know, I was going more along the lines of guys who have a stronger mid range three point game, not really known as finishers and not strong defenders. So, Buddy Heald, I think, is a kind of an interesting one. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I don't hate. I don't hate it. I don't think. I mean, Buddy Hield is a guy that you know, is like light out. Can be light out from three. I don't. Yeah, oh, he is. I don't. Yeah. I don't know if that in Jaden Hardy to kind of you know I'll give him the chance to be okay. <laughs> uh, Jordan Clarkson, I had. Um, Tim Hardaway Jr. and CJ McCollum, which at first, for some reason, CJ McCollum was one of the first names that popped into my mind for some reason. And I'm like, nah, that's a terrible comparison. And then when I dove into, I mean, they're similar sizes. McCollum really doesn't get to the line very often, doesn't play great defense. I'm like, okay, I'm not crazy. So I'll throw CJ McCollum out there, which I think would be, especially if he's going in the 20s, I mean, a pretty nice pick for a team but I mean he to me of all the prospect profiles we've done so far is just the most interesting because when you look at mocks and you look at profiles I understand like okay you know they're yeah you know they they're a safer pick not a lot of upside they're going late lottery so those teams that are trying to go over the edge that just need a, a nice role player you know this team needs upside this guy has a lot of upside I understand why he's a top 10 pick but this is the only one I guess I personally just don't understand his draft stock and I don't know if I've ever really said that before for any prospect that we've ever covered but he just to me looks like a higher level player than being a, a 20s pick it feels like a top 10 11 12 kind of pick to me and i'm interested to see where he lands on draft day i mean yeah that that's <clears throat> so what you're saying is you want the spurs to take him at nine. Oh god not at nine i mean he's no god no god you no. Said, if he, just uh, said he has you don't understand why he's not in that range i mean he should be in that range but i don't want them to take no i didn't know we need more more defense, no offense. Sorry. 
Let's <laughs> go I mean, back to the old. The Spurs, Spurs right? don't like offensive. No, if I'm thinking about it realistically, A, it would depend who's on the board. Because if I felt like there was someone a lot better than him on the board, that would annoy me. But if we're being honest about it and they took him at number nine, I would not be upset. I would be like, what? Okay, I'm okay with it. Because I do think he has a lot of upside. And apparently they don't understand people's draft boards anymore either. So maybe <laughs> the Spurs will take him. But yeah, I mean, I think that he has a skill set. So it def- I don't think I'll take it back. It wouldn't make me upset. Okay. Uh, I, what? Okay. Who would you rather? Would you rather have? Would you rather have him? But would you? Ra- See, this is. A, would you rather have him or Dean? Both are the kind of mysterious, like insanely high upside guys that are going mm. in this range. Like Jaden Hardy or Dean? If I'm the Spurs, or just in general. Let's do both. Let's just let's just let's just cover. If I'm both. the Spurs, Diang, because I b- do believe that they need to start chasing some star power, and I do think that he has more superstar potential, Diang, and I think he's just a better, more well-rounded player. And honestly, I, I guess I'd probably say Diang in general, just because I think he's a more well-rounded player. He's gonna provide good defense. Um, but I think if you're one of those teams kind of in the lotter, late lottery where you're looking for guys that can help you now to compete and win, I think that Hardy fits more into that category. So, yeah, I mean, I will say I like Diang's upside more just as a well-rounded player. That's fair. Yeah, I, I, oh, yeah, Hardy's definitely one of those guys. We don't, we, we haven't talked about this, about this a ton with each guy with, in terms of, but I think he's one. <clears throat> I think he's one of the more his. I think his offensive upside uh, makes him. He has a very good chance to stay in this league for a while. Uh, I because I I like his. I I like his offensive uh, game enough, but here's here's the thing. Who's you have you have to pick who's 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 the who will Jaden Hardy become a better defender than James Harden? Do you have that? Do you have any belief in him? No. <laughs> you don't think he'll become a better defender than James Harden? I wouldn't feel confident saying that. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. So here, last last one before we end it. So, so you're going up. You have to choose one of them to defend a guy in ISO <laughs> with the game on the line. <laughs> you are, you are, you have to have Jaden Hardy or James Harden on a guy in ISO at the end of the game. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you picking? James Harden. <laughs> <laughs> there. Does that make you happy now? Yes. Is that saying something positive about him see, defensively? See, see, you just... I've been waiting and thinking of an opportunity where I can where I can get you to say something positive about James Harden on the defensive end of the court. And Jaden Hardy has answered my prayers. <laughs> Thank you, Jaden Hardy, for nothing. But... <laughs> No, I mean, I think it's mostly because you said with the game on the line, because I do think James Harden is competitive. And when he ha- he has played defense a time or two, and I think that he had, he- I've look seen up, him put put- all the, all the compliments you're throwing James Harden. <laughs> I remember, what was it? Two years ago, I think in the playoffs, he had this one game where he played amazingly defensively. And they kind of needed him to lock down and do that, and he did. So I do think that he can if he feels like it. So I would have faith in him in a situation like that. All right. I like so, it. I like it. Now we, my I, day is complete. Good. I You made my day. I made your day. We can go home happy. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>